Well, hey there, my name is Brandon, and this is Rookie Preacher. This is a place where we help you preach and lead better. That's what we're all about here at Rookie Preacher. Uh, if you're not connected with our content on our website, go to rookiepreacher.com. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to give you some free resources to help you preach and lead better. We've got things like 56 weeks of preaching topics just for free. Just go there, sign up. Uh, to join the, the, the newsletter, and we will send all those resources. We have a free resource library, uh, free preaching topics, sermon evaluation, leadership pipeline, all kinds of things. Go to rookiepreacher.com, grab that. And uh, today in this video, what we're going to be talking about is five encouragements that I believe every pastor needs to be reminded of. As a pastor myself, just getting done preaching earlier, you know, ministry can be something where it's such a blessing at times. And yet it's some such a such a burden sometimes too, and especially on Sundays and Mondays, and you know you just have those kind of blues. And so I just want to offer these to you as just a way to encourage you. Uh, you know I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know what kind of challenges you faced at your church and your ministry, uh, but I pray that these encouragements, these truths, uh, will seep down into your heart and they will impact you in a positive way. Maybe give you encouragement to keep going and keep fighting. Uh, because ministry is a plotting. Oftentimes we're working, we're working, and sometimes we don't feel very much appreciated. So I want to give you these. So the first uh, encouragement, if I could offer it to you uh, and, and really hope that you receive it, is that God's word doesn't return void. It just doesn't. Like God's word is going to uh, take, you can take it to the bank and you can know that you're going to cash it there. And so like as an encouragement, when you preach God's word, preach it with passion. Preach it with, in, a, in such a way where you believe it so much to be true and that if the people who are listening to you, your congregation would follow it, would follow what God wants, that it would change their life. And sometimes in ministry we can forget the fact that God is still at work because sometimes we see the challenges that people face, the challenges that people are running up against uh, in their lives, and we can get discouraged. I mean, we can do that in ministry too as, as pastors. So God's word doesn't return void. Preach it with passion. Preach it so that, that people could see your belief in it, and it may just be what they need to keep fighting, to keep going. And, and so just remember, God's word doesn't return void ever. The, the second one is that your impact reaches further than your awareness reaches. I'll say it again. Your impact reaches further than your awareness does. It's just true. Like in ministry, oftentimes, you know, we don't get the uh, the result of our work as much as, say, if we were in sales. Like, you know, you're, you're, you're selling a car, you work at a car dealership and you sell a car, you get the, the fruit of your labor right there. You see that a transaction happened. Well, ministry isn't transactional. and You know this. And so oftentimes we We'll put in a lot of work and we'll put in a lot of dedication and we'll, we'll invest in people's lives and oftentimes we don't see the fruit of that. And that's okay because the reality is we don't do this for us, um, but the reality is our, our leadership, our investment, our impact reaches further than our awareness does. You may get glimpsed, and this is such a blessing when you do, when someone will share with you maybe how your words one day or your encouragement one day it really changed the, the course of their life. And, and sometimes they'll share that with you, and sometimes you'll get to receive that, but oftentimes we don't. But I just want you to know that you can trust in the fact that your impact that you're making right now at the church you're serving, no matter how you think things are going, your impact reaches far further than your awareness of your impact does. So keep fighting. The third uh, encouragement I want to give you is that your greatest, most impactful disciple-making will happen in your home. And let me encourage you from a theological standpoint, your home, the people in it, your, your spouse, your kids, that's still the church. Too often times we, make a, we, we create a dichotomy between the home and the church, when in fact the home is the church. And so, Pastor, as, as someone leading a family and leading a church, understand that your ministry reaches into your home. That is part of what you do as a pastor, but, but beyond that, it's what you do as a, as a, as a parent. Um, so your greatest disciple making is going to happen in your home. Imagine what it would look like, right, for your kids to grow up, knowing that uh, their, their, their father, their mother loves them radically. Um, and, and, and to know that Jesus is the source of that love. Your greatest, most impactful disciple making happens in your home. Too many times what we do in ministry is we, we, we spend a lot of time thinking about the strategic direction of the church, what, what we think we need to do here. And, and we spend a lot of time thinking about it, but we don't spend a lot of time thinking about 
what we can do in our home to be more intentional, to be making disciples of our kids and of our spouse. Um, so I encourage you to realize that the disciple making that happens in your home, that's also the church. You don't have to make a dichotomy, a false choice between home and church. You don't have to pit those two things together because in reality, they're one and the same. So the next uh, encouragement I just want to give you is that God created you to be you. He doesn't need you to be your favorite preacher. He doesn't need you to be what you think you should be. Um, he needs you and he wants you to be who you were created to be. Um, you know, if, if say, one of your favorite preachers, if, if they chose to be like their favorite preacher, they wouldn't be who they are. The, the person who speaks to you most uh, powerfully if you would, would set it in your soul that your identity comes from God and that who you are, the passion that goes through your personality, is sufficient, then I think you would be freed up to be even more impactful in your preaching and your ministry. Uh, just remember, God created you to be you, not someone else. So step into that and lean into that. It's a, it's a powerful thing. When you have that light bulb click, and, and that flip goes goes on, and, and you can start to just be you in the pulpit and in the ministry. Uh, it'll change things. So just lean into that. Who are you? Create some self-awareness. I encourage you to check out the Enneagram and, and learn more about how God has wired you uh, and lean into that. Now, the last thing is, and this is something that I know, Pastor, you know this. Uh, you tell people this all, every week. But sometimes uh, in ministry, we forget this for ourselves. God loves you radically. He loves you radically. I know that it can be easy to tell that to other people and encourage them, but sometimes we need to preach that to ourselves. God loves you radically. I don't know what you're facing right now. I don't know what kind of discouragements you're facing, but I want you to know, and I need you to know, and you need to know this, that God loves you radically. He lavishly loves you. Uh, His grace is sufficient for you, and all the, the things that keep you up at night, he wants to take that. He wants to take all the burdens of the leadership that you hold. Um, he wants to take all those those burdens, all those weights. And, and I know because you're leading and, and you care about your leadership and the impact that you have, I know that oftentimes you probably try to hold that uh, yourself. But you can't do it. And God loves you too much to let you try and carry that weight. So give it to him. God loves you radically. His grace is sufficient, not just for the people in the pew, but for you. God loves you radically. So those are five encouragements that I believe every pastor needs to hear. If you have a, a friend in ministry, please send this to them so that they can be encouraged. Um, because you never know how close someone is to quitting, to calling it quits, to throwing in the white flag, and, and just discontinuing their, their work. Um, we need to be encouraged, Pastor. Uh, you need it. I need it. So let's... Go back to these five things. Again, God's word doesn't return void, so you can preach it as if that's true, because it is. Your impact reaches further than your awareness of that impact does. Your greatest, most impactful disciple making will happen in your home. And guess what? Your home is also the church. Uh, God created you to be you, so just be you. You don't have to try and be someone else. You shouldn't be trying to try and be someone else. You should just be you. And God loves you radically. I hope this is encouraging. If it, if it is, uh, go ahead and hit the like button on YouTube. Uh, maybe leave a comment to just offer some encouragements to your fellow pastors. Um, and, and I hope that this uh, resonated with you. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like more content uh, to help you preach and lead better. Maybe sometimes just to give you some encouragement because ministry can be tough. But hey, we're fighting the good fight together. So keep fighting. Keep walking. Keep plodding. It's not in vain.